Hi guys, Dr. J here, and in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of weather and weather related to UAV flying. And these are going to be important for the Part 107 exam and also just important in general uh, when you're flying with your UAV uh, to be aware of and things that you're going to want to watch out for. So as usual, I've got my list of um, additional resources here that you can check out. We'll talk about wind, clouds, and fog, and we'll start with wind. Uh, wind is obviously going to have an impact on your UAV performance. Um, and there's really two kinds of, of wind, so to speak. So just the movement of air around on the surface of the earth is going to result in wind. And wind is going to be horizontal. Um, and then we've also got what are called convective currents, and that's going to be vertical motion of air. So wind is going to be horizontal, parallel to the surface of the earth, and convective currents are going to be um, vertical. Now, wind is going to be occurring because of changes in air pressure. Let me just go right to an image here. So here we see uh, different pressure systems. And you will recall that standard air pressure, standard atmospheric pressure at the surface is 1013.2, I believe, uh, hectopascals of air pressure. And so here we have 1016, 1004, 1000. So this is a low pressure system. So we've got these contours, and these contours are telling us lines of constant pressure. These are called isobars here. And these isobars are telling us a lot, actually, about the kind of wind that we can expect to have in these systems. So isobars, because they're lines of constant pressure, if they are spaced closely together, so let's look here, for example, you've got quite a bit of isobars in a relatively small area. <clears throat> That's telling you that the wind in that area is going to be most likely a uh, higher wind, wind speed. Um, and that's because the pressure gradient here, the difference in pressure as you travel along, is changing much faster than, let's say, in this direction. Here we have a much larger spacing between these constant lines of constant pressure. And so you can think about pressure the same way that you would think about um, rolling down a slope. And in the same way, air is going to be flowing from high pressure to low pressure, and it's going to be moving from these areas where the isobars are showing us the pressure is higher to the areas where the um, isobars are showing us the pressure is lower. Now, they're not going to go necessarily going to flow straight from high to low pressure. We'll talk about that in just, talk about that in just a second. Because of the rotation of the Earth and various other factors, uh, you end up getting kind of circular air currents uh, depending on where you are. Northern Earth, Southern Hemisphere, there's a difference. By looking at these pressure lines, we can get already get an idea of the pressure and the direction of air movement and the speed of air movement just by looking at these isobar lines. High pressure air is going to be flowing out from that high pressure system to the places around. And as a result, what we have here is, uh, is an airflow set up in a high pressure system where things are being pushed down and out, down and out. And in the northern hemisphere, at least, they're going to be, air is going to be flowing out in a clockwise manner, clockwise kind of rotating around these areas of high pressure. So if I back up here to this slide, here we would expect airflow to be kind of in this direction around this high pressure system, clockwise airflow. And then in the low pressure system, we would expect the opposite, counterclockwise airflow. In a low pressure system, it's going to be just the opposite. So in a low pressure system, low pressure, that means air is moving in. And again, it's kind of moving in and rotating because of the Earth's rotation. And so we have low pressure system, we have air moving in, and as it's moving in, it's sort of moving up. And so you can imagine we're moving air in and up in a low pressure system. We're moving air down and out in a high pressure system. And that's going to set up, especially in the low pressure system, this is going to set up vertical air movement, which can lead to things like thunderstorms and things like that. So we've got counterclockwise flow in, in and up is what you should think about with a low pressure system. And down and out is what you should think about with a high pressure system. Air is getting air. The air in the high pressure system is forcing itself out into other areas that are low pressure, where air is kind of coming in to fill up that low pressure area. OK, let's talk about convective currents. Convective currents are vertical currents. And these are going to be mostly related to uneven heating of the ground, uh, other kinds of structures that are deflecting air currents vertically. And these are going to be particularly important for pilots because we don't want to be in vertical air currents that are going to take our drone to the ground or take it way up high where it shouldn't be. So uneven heating of the ground occurs because different materials absorb heat more. And so what happens is rock, sand, concrete, 
uh, surfaces that are dry. So the key factor here is water. Water absorbs a lot of heat without changing its temperature too much. And so anywhere where you have water, you're going to have heat absorption. And so that heat is not going to be able to be reflected back up into the air. It's not going to be uh, not going to result in warmer air above that surface. And so moisture, damp soil, plants, those things are going to take time to warm up and they're going to absorb heat instead of radiate heat. Whereas if you have bare surfaces like rock, sand, and concrete, those are going to heat up quickly. There's no water there to absorb a lot of heat, so they're going to heat up quickly and then they're going to start radiating heat. This pattern of heating and cooling is going to result in vertical air currents where you have warm air rising, cool air sinking, um, and this can result in a bumpy ride for your aircraft. So if you're flying a UAV you'll, and you're flying over different types of surfaces, uh, let's say uh, asphalt versus grass versus trees, there's going to be different thermals that are associated with those, whether that's sinking air or rising warm air. Now, the result of this for flying is that your UAV is going to be either pushed up when they're going over warm and rising air or drawn down when you're going over cooling and sinking air. Uh, and so you're going to end up having a bumpy ride. If you can fly higher, you can avoid these. But obviously, since we can only fly at 400 feet for a UAV pilot, there's not much we can do. Uh, this is why, by the way, manned aircraft pilots fly very high, like 40,000 feet or 30,000 feet. This is to avoid all of these thermal air currents, vertical air currents, that result in a more bumpy ride. Uh, but uneven heating is not the only thing which can cause vertical air currents. We've also got obstructions. And wind over mountains, even wind over smaller obstructions than a mountain can cause strong vertical air currents. Um, this is uh, an example here you've seen in the plot. We've got wind coming over a mountain and then sort of creating some turbulence on the backside of that mountain. And this is a very common kind of airflow to experience in a mountainous area. But even, as I said, smaller objects like buildings and even trees can cause significant air changes to the wind. And so you can get these eddy currents moving around the building, uh, moving um, between buildings, for example. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but sometimes I'll be uh, in an area with several buildings during a very windy day. And in some areas, the wind is blocked. And in some areas, the wind is like channeled, uh, right? And you'll get these very strong gusty winds coming down between buildings, something like this. So you always have to be very careful around any kind of obstructions to the wind uh, when you're flying in order to avoid uh, crashing or losing control of your UAV. There's a particular type of wind called low-level wind shear, and this is a sudden change in the wind speed or direction in a small area. Um, and so this is typically going to be associated with fronts and storms, things like that. Uh, and this is very dangerous for manned aircraft. Uh, obviously, you don't want to have a sudden change in the wind speed or direction, especially, uh, let's say, a vertical change um, when you're flying an aircraft. And it can also be dangerous for your UAVs because, again, you don't want your UAV to get all of a sudden slammed on the ground or taken up into the air far away. And as I mentioned, they are associated with fronts and thunderstorms. Microbursts are a form of low-level wind shear, and I think I've got a picture here of microbursts. So this is when you've seen these, they're like a cloudburst. All of a sudden, you've got just rain dumping down uh, in a small area from a rain cloud. And this is, again, something that's very dangerous for aircraft. So as I mentioned, water is really the controlling factor when it comes to absorbing heat versus radiating heat. And if we have a large water body like a lake or the ocean, for example, this is going to result in setting up prevailing wind currents. And again, these are important because if you realize that the wind is blowing in a particular direction, you can take advantage of that or you have to watch out for that depending on what you're doing with your UAV. So during the day, the land is going to heat up faster. You're going to absorb less heat than the water, the land will, and then it's going to start radiating heat more quickly. And so this is going to set up a warming air pattern over the land and a cooling air pattern over the water. And the net effect of this is a sea breeze. You get air moving from high pressure over the water, where the air is descending, creating high pressure. And then you get air moving onshore, where the pressure is low. And again, think down and out on the high pressure uh, over the water, where it's, it's absorbing all the heat. And so there's cooling, sinking air. And then on land, we're heating up really fast. We're radiating heat into the air. It's rising. And you set up this low pressure where the air is coming in. And moving up and so you have this sea breeze system now during the night the opposite is true because the land also cools down faster so water retains its heat faster 
And so then you're heating up the air over the ocean, actually, much more than you are over the land. So then you've got the water radiating heat into the air, warming the air. That sets up a low pressure system over the ocean where air is coming in and up. It's warming up, it's rising, that's low pressure. It's moving to the land and it's falling. And so then you have a land breeze. You have high pressure on land because it's cool, that air is sinking. And so you have air moving from the land to the ocean on, on the ground surface and then rising, getting warmed up, rising, and then flowing back over to the land and setting up this sea breeze, this, uh, excuse me, land breeze circulation pattern. And so for UAV operations, you obviously want to keep this in mind. If you're trying to fly out to the ocean, maybe you're doing search and rescue um, or over any body of water. If you're flying out during the day, it's going to be much harder going out than coming back. But if you're flying out at night, um, it's going to be much easier to fly out than it is to come back. And so this is a situation where you might fly out and be okay, but when you try to turn around and try to come back, you're going to have prevailing wind against you. It's going to run your battery down, and it's going to be difficult for you to get back to the shore. So circulation patterns. Air is going to be moving from high pressure to low pressure, moving down and out with high pressure systems, and moving up and in, or in and up, uh, in low pressure systems. 